Lord, you're worthy to be praised. You deserve the best. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. You deserve the best. It's a beautiful day. It's a day that the Lord has made. Uh, it's a month, not just a day. It's a month of celebrating a very different species uh, that God included in his creation. When I was uh, asked to speak on women, I thought, Lord, what do I speak about? But immediately when I asked as to what I must speak about, the Spirit dropped the word womb in my heart. And I thought, wow, that sounds very interesting. Sometimes I wish I was a medical doctor. Uh, so that I, I understand the anatomy of a human being. Uh, but that's not who I am and that's not what God allowed for me to do. So I got into trying to understand and to read and to get the significance of this particular word or this particular aspect of the anatomy of the human species, particularly a woman. The word womb is called rechem in the Hebrew version, and it is coming from the root uh, called raham. And what is very interesting is that these words are speaking about compassion and mercy. So when I began looking at this word, I was very interested in getting into the, 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 the structure of a woman. And indeed, I, I, I looked and I zoomed into the, the uterus uh, and I could tell and I could see where and what happens when the egg begins to implant. In other words, it attaches itself on the wall of the, uh, of the womb. You will for correct me if I'm wrong from a, a medical point of view but I'm not a, a doctor. But the, the, once the egg is fertilized, it moves and attaches. In that attachment, you then know in the, I would say you would know from a medical point of view, but we only would know, the woman would only would know after four weeks, four weeks, three weeks, whatever the, the time that we take before she sees her menstrual cycle again. But I want to emphasize something here, that at the attachment, then in the attachment process, it is a hidden process. Nobody knows, including the one whose egg has attached to the, to the uterus, uh, lining, whether it's a lining, whatever, but in the womb of the woman so that I can, I don't become, I don't try to sound like a doctor. Now, I think for me, it really just began, it became important to understand that we need to know as women that we carry something that is so powerful in partnering with the multiplication that God says unto men, Thou shalt have dominion, and thou shalt multiply, and thou shalt have dominion over the earth and all else. Hallelujah. So I do uh, want to then say we remain in the eternal plan of multiplication as women. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm intrigued by this hidden process that God allows to happen without even the one that's carrying 
the, the, the now which will develop into a fetus and until it becomes a baby, including that one, God hides it. And the only time they realize that something could have happened is when those periods are not coming. What a powerful covenant. What a powerful agreement between the child that is yet to be the fetus or the egg and this one that God has allowed her being, her being of the womb to carry that which will be invisible for a couple of weeks, but at some particular point it becomes visible. I'm talking about a woman, I'm talking about a man. Uh, uh, of women, I'm talking about a species, a species that the enemy has has made us to believe who we are not, has turned upside down the critical role in the creation of God, has turned upside down the trust that God entrusted in us. This is an eternal trusting the uterus of a woman or the womb of a woman that it will hide the seed of the man until such time that we are able, the owner is able to begin to say, I am no longer myself. But even then, we still go one, two months, uh, and still the world cannot see, hallelujah, because that which is precious in the eyes of God there are times where it ought not to be seen until at the right time. I'm talking about a woman who is very important in the eyes of God. Not only in the eyes of God, but in the eternal multiplication process that God makes as part of creation. So inside the womb of the woman, really, the egg begins to implant to the uterus lining, defining a moment of commitment. So as the egg attaches, it commits to what it has attached to, that I am going to trust that my attachment to you, you are protective enough to carry me, and I trust you wholly, and I do not doubt that my being attached on you or to you, you will carry through this commitment. I'm sorry that I'm beginning to be emotional, but we must never take lightly the coming on earth of any human being through the divine plan. I'm not talking about all other plans and all other ways that we've created, but I'm talking about when the egg holily trusts that the uterus of the woman will hold it, it will not reject it, it will not discard it. So there is an, a covenant, there is an agreement, there is a oneness here between two things that become one, until the journey of the nine or the 40, 40 weeks of pregnancy, when after a couple of months or the, 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 at the end of the first trimester, we begin to see that really someone is no longer as slim as they were before. I'm talking about the month, and it is the month of women. And I want to believe that only after this implant or attachment has secretly been protected, the woman does only then realize that he has missed his period and therefore pregnancy is there. I'm talking about the womb. So the womb is a place of protection. The womb is a place of protection. God entrusted women to protect what was his, and that is his people. That is why mothers, no matter how much we can be out of order, 
when that child comes out, we have long started the commitment journey that we're going to go all the way despite the change of shape, despite how we look, despite the complexities of pregnancy, despite the change of character, but it is all in the plan of God that the commitment and the attachment has been made, that the covenant of making sure that what has entered the uterus or the womb of the woman, it will grow up until that the woman bears the child. So what am I saying to women today? I'm saying that the womb is not only physical, but it is a spiritual covenant that was chosen by God for his divine purposes. The womb, not only is it a, a, a carrier of what is divine, but it is also a spiritual covenant that no woman can unchange. In the nine weeks or the 40 weeks, we see the fruit of the spirit. Maybe let me just... Uh, focus on the number nine you know we, we nine months we are caring we are all disfigured and the lord creates inside us an acceptance of this disfigured shape he creates an allowance he he allows us to be capable to be all that the pregnancy brings to us as women he gives us not only the physical body uh, for the child to stretch as it grows, but he gives us the physical body to carry another human being inside of us. What am I saying to us? The nine also represents the fruit of the spirit. Hidden inside itself are also nine elements of the fruit of the spirit. In the wilderness, when we are pregnant, some women are truly in the wilderness. Some get pregnant possibly outside marriage. Some get pregnant within marriage. But there is a whole wilderness. There is a whole journey when no one knows how the woman feels. Sometimes on account of the woman not knowing how I am feeling and why my moods are changing, even though we may know that the moods are changing because of the pregnancy. But at that very point when we are so vulnerable, some men walk away because they cannot understand. Others are not willing to deal with all of this. And yet I want to believe that they are looking forward to what will be the end result of the nine months what am i saying i'm saying there is a wilderness but this wilderness was designated by god and we needed to go through it all all the way up until the child is born a test of commitment to the covenant that goes for a full nine months is not a small time it is one thing to have pain today but it is another to have pain again and again. And when we are thinking we are nursing this pain, something else comes up all in this wilderness that the men cannot even understand and we don't expect them to understand. All we do, we expect someone to be around us during this period. But even if they can be around us, this wilderness of the nine months there is only you and the one that is hidden inside. I want to say to you, if it is not the child that is hidden inside of you, there is somebody who is called the Holy Spirit. There is the comforter inside of you. And I want women to understand. And I want them to arise to the one that is hidden, but whose fruit will give different aspects of the elements of what is hidden in, in himself as the fruit of the Spirit, hallelujah. So that when the child is born, we can begin to see love. 
we can begin to see patience. You know, that child, that this journey just doesn't stop when the child is born. When the child comes out, you've got to deal with issues of pain. Your body has got to readjust. And all of that is still part of the wilderness. We are readjusting, you are recovering yourself. All of a sudden, you never had milk, but your boobs begin to give life to a, a, a life that is so nourishing to the point that other aspects of you develop. When that baby cries, you are the first one possibly to hear the baby crying. You are the first one without having gone to school. There is no school. There is no school for mothers on how to raise babies because there is the fruit of the Spirit of God that is hidden inside of them. I want to say to women today, as we are in this powerful month where everyone is celebrating women, women celebrate yourselves more. Celebrate the multi-dimensional aspects of God that are hidden inside of you. Celebrate the fact that you are designated or called the helper. Tap into the power of the helper. Tap into perseverance. I've never seen a single mother who walks away from the child just because the child is crying. I have never seen, but there is so much compassion. The mother wants to know that I have changed the diaper. I have fed my baby. So what exactly is going on? I'm talking about the fruit of perseverance. I'm talking about the fruit of not giving up. I'm talking about the long suffering that when that child is no longer not well, you don't turn a blind eye, you don't watch TV because what you covenanted with, which is this baby, is still attached to to you and you run all the way with it even when it is painful so woman you've got a lot yes it may be hidden allow the holy spirit allow the nature of that covering of that uterus of that expansion of it as the baby grows allow yourself to say i will yield to the holy spirit i will allow him to be inside of me so that i can continue to nurture the people of god the children that i may have given birth to and including those that may be without there is a mother there is a nurturing in women it does not come externally but it comes from the inside and it is reliant upon the one who is the holy spirit the one who carries the spirit of life the one who carries the the ability to persevere the ability to be humble and to yield to this that is uncomfortable with an expectant heart that after all is said and done, my pain, even the pain of birth and the holding of the child, I shall forget the pain. I'm sitting here as a woman that has given birth naturally. I can attest that at the coming out of the child, I could not recall the pain because when we can recall the pain, we will stop the, the agreement between ourselves and God. But God made it a point that he wipes away. So when God says, I shall wipe away their tears, I shall wipe away their pain. Women, do not pretend like you do not know that the child, the normal child bearing experience carries so much pain that you're thinking you are going to die. But the moment that vagina has opened up or the child is out, nothing in you 
Nothing in you, even your subconscious, uh, is not capable, uh, although it is capable to carry all other things, uh, but it cannot carry the, 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 the extent uh, or the magnitude of the pain, including even the vows that we say as a result of the pain, that if it is going to be this painful, Lord, I'm not going to go through it again. Before we know it, there is another pregnancy, a second child is coming. Where do we all get it from? It is all from the helper. It is all from the divine plan of God. The Bible says, who can thwart, who can frustrate the will of God? Not even the ones that go through the wilderness. They go through the wilderness one time, even now it's better. Our mothers used to have eight, seven, ten children. But we bless God because the covenant of multiplication is still continuing. And I'm saying to you, woman, let us not allow what is not temporary to, to hurt us when we can go through such a, a different stages of evolution inside of us and still be powerful and still have the love to carry and to cuddle that baby. It doesn't matter how painful he came out. It doesn't matter how painful she came out. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying that the term womb, rekem means compassion. That which encompasses the hidden word of Christ. We are the one that encompasses the hidden spoken word that translates itself to a human being, be it a girl or a boy. We are that, and that is powerful. It does not matter how possibly at times our brothers have looked down upon us, our brothers have said we don't qualify, but there is something that is hidden in a woman that is not found anywhere. It is just given by God to a woman. And I do want to say, woman, you are greater than you have been told. You are greater than you have been gossiped about. You are greater than you have been let down because you carry what heavens has entrusted upon you. You do not need to be validated by man. What God has hidden inside of you, how God has trusted you, how God has provided you, how God has shielded that child. God says, you are the apple of my eye. The Bible tells me that when God had created all else, yes, he created created man and woman but it got to a point where it needed separation because God knew that it could not happen. His plan could not carry on unless he separated the one that could be the one that he enters into a covenant with to carry the hidden the invisible to the point that it becomes visible and its visibility is a child and it doesn't stop there the mother continues to know when that child is hungry the mother continues to give that love the mother continues to feed that child the mother continues to make sure that all that the child is needing without having gone to school both of them both mother and child have not gone to school but there is a helper, there is a teacher, there is a divine teacher who teaches the mother and the child to interpret each other's language. Women, many times we have looked externally. We have looked externally for validation. We have looked externally for being reassured. It's great to be reassured. But I just want you to know that you have a helper, the one who says you will not go to school. The Bible says at some point they confounded Jesus because they were saying he is only but the son of, of, of Joseph and, and Mary. Where on earth does he get so much knowledge? Knowledge and wisdom comes from the source 
of life itself. And this is what woman is given that no man can interpret. No matter how many degrees a man may have, no man can carry a child. And the language between the child and the mother doesn't just start, but it, it doesn't just start when the child is out. It's been there. I want you to celebrate yourself. I want you to celebrate yourself. Maybe as I close, what is synonymous with compassion and the woman's journey in the nine months is the word truth. You cannot carry that which is inside of you and carry a lie. I have never heard of, unless people are playing with Buddhism and whatever else that's out there that I've never experienced, but each time I was pregnant, I was pregnant truth, which means I was pregnant what God had planted inside of me. It came out as he had planted it. Women, let us arise in the truth that is hidden inside of us. Let us arise and live a life of legacy for our children and live a life that will allow us to sleep in peace knowing that we have truthfully and faithfully and with all commitment gone all the way trusting the one who is able to help us trusting the one who is able to teach us and his name is the helper the greatest teacher the holy spirit there is therefore a divine purpose of god over your life he has entrusted you with more than do not doubt yourself Inside of you, Christ made a spiritual provision for your spirit man to attach to the covenant of life beyond, not beyond carrying it, but right to the point of nurturing it. Right to the point of nurturing, not just nurturing, but nurturing with the compassion of the Father. Where do you get all of that from? It is during the wilderness. It is during the time of the pregnancy. It is during the time of being alone that you are taught. You are taught. And therefore, never look at yourself and say, I'm stupid, I don't have this, I don't have that. If you can point at the fact that you are a woman, then you are already a carrier of the wisdom of God that can be discharged at any given point in time when you are ready and also when you are conscious of who you are. If you are to truthfully as in or during the pregnancy, I can assure you that you will live a life of commitment to truth and a life of commitment to peace. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you because his compassion is eternal in all its facets. All the miracles that Jesus performed, they were not performed because he was God incarnate. The Bible will always raise the compassion. And this is the compassion that allows women to nurture their babies. This is the compassion that allows them to feel even for another child that they did not carry. This is the compassion that allows women to leave their homes the comfort of their homes and go commit to other families because God destined them to be partakers of the multiplication of the divine plan of God. You leave your mother and your, your father, your siblings, and you go and you attach. You attach to that which you do not know. But because you are trusting in God, you continue with the journey. What am I saying to you? You are way more powerful. You are way more powerful. You are, more, you are way more capable. It does not matter the feedback that you may have been given. So let us see the fruit bearing outside the hidden from you. Let us see it in its practicality. And I want to say that while I'm saying it, maybe it's just a rhetoric a statement because already we're seeing many women just arising and being mothers 
and being aunts and being grannies and being sisters, even to people that they do not know. I am saying let us continue to nurture. Let us continue to agree on the mandate. Let us continue to rely on him that is the teacher and all else will go well with us. As I close, Esther arose and he was, she was ready to risk her life for the freedom of the Jews. We're in an era where it is safe to hide so that we are never known. But women were chosen to arise. There is a risk even when you are carrying that baby. Even when that baby is being born, there is a risk that you can either lose your life or maybe the life of the baby. We are risk takers, women. Let us arise and take the same risks because those, that ability is not from school, but that ability was injected, was imbued in us by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hidden time, there was the only hidden time of Esther. It was when she was fasting and praying. There is power in fasting and praying women. There is power when we converse with God. There is power when we converse with God in our secret places. And at some particular point, though hidden in fasting and prayer, when the time came, what happens? We are favored by God. Esther received favor with God, with the king. Esther received favor to the point that the Jews were kept alive. To this day, they are celebrating their Freedom Day. How did they get to that Freedom Day? It was not through guns. It was not through weapons. But it was through a woman who hid with the Holy Spirit, hidden by the Holy Spirit and did what she knew she could do best, which was fasting and prayer. And the plans of Haman began to eat himself and his entire household. And those that were destined for graves, they became celebrators of life. How did it happen? It happened through a woman. Let us arise. Let our cries be known before God, because he has created us such that we are victorious. Let this month be victorious. Let us see creativity in women. Let us see them in leadership roles. Let us see them leading and bringing about change. Let us see them getting into communities and saying it's not about the gender, but it is about whom is hidden inside that teaches me wisdom, not intelligence, but wisdom of God. Let us arise and become partakers of saving our beautiful continent, the continent of Africa. I hope you are blessed. I hope you will take this month. I hope you will embrace yourself first before you go around looking for anybody to embrace you. The Bible knows that you are loved unconditionally. You are trusted unconditionally. And the trust we've seen, that is why we're sitting as women today. I want to say to you, greater is the one that is inside of you than what all circumstances may have proven you wrong, may have trampled on you, may have caused self-doubt, but there is power in a woman. Stay blessed as you arise and shine for your light has come, but it has to come in you first before we can say there is a light in you. Stay blessed. Stay favored, stay energized, stay believing, stay relying upon the Holy Spirit. He is faithful. Next time, stay blessed.